well, I don't want to eat with anyone. <laughs> I think, man, if so I am head writer and, and I know Vince would have done it back in the day. Listen, Francine, you know, it's the, back in the day when the uh, Montreal screw job went down. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Vince goes into Brett's locker room. The, ne the next day we're in a production meeting and Vince has a black eye. So here, here's who's in the meeting. It's me. It's Pritchard, it's JR, it's Pat, it's Briscoe, like Kevin Dunn, maybe like six people. So Francine, I'm watching this and every single person in that room, you know, Vince, Vince is not talking. Vince is listening. Every single person in that room wants to sweep it under the rug like it never happened. So I'm sitting there and I'm listening to all this. And then after hearing what everybody had to say, I said, are you effing nuts? This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Bret Hart punched Vince McMahon in the face. And you're going to sweep that under the rug like it never happened. Nothing like this will probably ever happen again in the history of this business. And you are not going to take advantage of that. And, and, and as I'm saying this, I'm looking at Vince and I know Vince is thinking he's 100% right. We get back to Stanford that week. And that's when Vince went in the studio and cut the Vince McMahon didn't screw Bret Hart. Bret Hart screwed Bret Hart. And that was the start of the Mr. McMahon character. That would have never happened if Vince Russo was not in the room. If Vince Russo was not in the room, they would have swept that all right under the rug. And you might not ever even had a Mr. McMahon. And they're doing the same thing today. You're bringing back a guy like CM Punk who's got controversy out the wazoo everywhere he goes, everybody he meets, and you're not going to allow your roster to give their real feelings about Punk and then work that into programming content? You're fools, man. You're absolutely fools. That's an interesting take. Very interesting take. Um, if I can switch gears, do you have anything to add, Chad? Because I'm going to switch gears for no, a second. I mean, it's, it, I, there, what else can I say? I mean, it's okay. just, it's, I can't recognize any bit of what I watched. I watched that whole Raw, and I haven't watched a Raw in years from start to finish just because I wanted to see what Punk had to say. And I got suckered into three hours, and I said the show should be two. If you had to, if you had to write three hours of a raw Vince, in the heyday of '98, I mean, wouldn't you have exhausted some of your best ideas if you had to stretch it? Another I'll, I'll hour? be Chad. I'll be honest with you, man. When Ed and I went over to Nitro, the first nine Nitros were three hours. Right, bro. With the roster we had, we had absolutely no problem. Absolutely no problem writing a three-hour show, bro. Here's the problem: they don't have writers. They don't have writers. They've got Paul Haim. They got the Haymans and they got the Pritchards and they got the Michael Hayes and they got all these people. These people are not writers. They've never been writers. They've never been trained as a writer. They don't have a degree in writing. Just because Triple H won 35 world titles doesn't make Triple H a freaking writer. I, Chad, they did the same thing. Francine, same thing. The day after Owen Hart dies. They want to go on and shoot a Raw with no mention of what happened the night before. No mention. We're going to put on a regular show. I went into a closed-door meeting with me, Vince McMahon, and Kevin Dunn. And I started emotionally breaking down. And I basically, I not basically, I told them, if this show is not a tribute to Owen Hart, I am going home right now. I'm going home right now. Because if you're going to have a Raw like nothing happened last night, I I'm not going to be a part of that. And then what did they what did they what did they turn the show into? It was a memorial to Owen Hart. Right. But bro, that's because I was there. 
And 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 and, and like I I was the guy who was never in the bubble. I was just a a, a wrestling fan. I I was a father. I I was a husband. I was a regular guy. So I did not see things through their ridiculous bubble. And I was the only one that said, I, I'm, I'm literally leaving right now if that's what this show is going to be tonight. So you're, you're trying to say they wouldn't have even acknowledged him down the line? You don't, do you you don't think uh, Owen Hart? They would they would have they would have they would have mentioned what happened last night and had about a a, a three minute package and that and would have been it. the end of it. That would have been the end of it. Yes. Wow. Yes, that happened. That happened. I believe you. A hundred percent. I believe. That's what you. I'm talking about. That that that's what I mean about the wrestling bubble. That's that's what I'm talking about. Huh. That one I never heard. But I, 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 I've never really said that before. That's exactly it was it was just the three of us in a room, just well, the three of us. Instead of it being this iconic show now that we all remember and yes. can, you know, just uh, close your eyes and see Austin, you know, saluting the the Tron and everybody's emotional speeches. That's incredible that they would just bypass that for Absolutely. matches for the sake of matches on a show where people were wrestling with blood stains in the middle of, of, of a canvas. Yeah. It, it, like I said, Chad, the same exact thing when Brett punched Vince and we're not going to talk about this. They, they, they're still in the we're not going to talk about this mode. Ugh, unbelievable. Incredible.